this devastated landscape, the guns have fallen silent, at least for now. But a menace still lurks in southern Lebanon, one which is causing new casualties almost daily. The valleys now echo to these booms, detonations of unexploded sub munitions. With some haste, teams like this one are being trained to dig up and dispose of a particularly hazardous munition, cluster bombs. The United Nations estimates that Israel fired 4 million munitions during the war and that 90% of the cluster bombs were dropped in the last 72 hours of the conflict. Their actions have provoked international outrage and now this Israeli reserve soldier has joined the chorus of disapproval as demands for a worldwide ban grow louder. Speaking on condition of anonymity, he says he only imagined such a weapon would be used in a full-scale war. Everybody was surprised that we were actually being deployed because, again, we've always seen it and we were trained to think that this is a doomsday device. This is for the big war with Syria. This is, this is a weapon of massive war. You only use it when you're with, in a war with an army. Soldier E says his unit fired about 1.2 million cluster bomblets, even though they had neither previously test fired the weapon nor were certain what its impact might be. We were firing an untested weapon. When we started shooting it, they told us, wow, it hits great, you're right on, on the point. And after a few times, they told us, well, actually, we don't know what it does. We've never seen it hit anything. We don't know where it landed or what happened. It just disappeared. The army zigzagged between it really hits great to we have no clue what the hell happened. Soldier E claims they were deliberately misled about their targets, often being told by their commanders that they were firing into unpopulated areas, including locations described by the army as nature reserves. Do you believe you were firing in an unpopulated area? There is no such thing, an unpopulated area. It's just not so densely populated, perhaps. But you didn't believe the information you were being given by your own commanders? No, never. You can quote that. I never believed anything that uh, was officially IDF policy. In a statement to More 4 News, the Israeli military rejected the allegations that its commanders may have misled their men. While cluster bombs are not banned weapons, international law prohibits their use in and around civilian areas. The Israeli army said they always made efforts to avoid civilian areas and only targeted residential neighborhoods from which Hezbollah guerrillas were launching missiles. And even then, only after issuing warnings. There's lots of uh, greenery around here, banana plantations, olive groves. They are in the trees, they are inside the banana plantations, in banana plants. Um, they're on the roofs of the houses, um, they're everywhere. They are very unstable, and, uh, and all these are, are, are fragmentation and shape charge, so they are, they, they, they kill, you know, as simple as that. We were shown pictures of the Israeli clusters, which have eye-catching ribbons, making them attractive to vulnerable young children. It's shiny and attractive, so people go and pick it up and try have a look. Ones you can neutralize, mm -hmm. so you can remove them. So the Israeli and Chinese ones you can't. Mine clearance teams here are finding a very high rate of duds, bombs that fail to detonate on impact and are still at risk of exploding. Instead of the expected 10% failure rate, experts suggest the failure rate of Israeli submunitions anywhere between 30 and 40%. A large charge of Semtex is the only way to neutralize these Israeli-made bombs. The team has just found two cluster bombs in this olive orchard during a random search of the area. There are thousands of such bomblets in olive orchards and fields all around this area, scattered over many, many miles, and they're having a devastating impact. 11-year-old Hassan Tahayne was luckier than some. We found the bomb when I was playing in an olive grove with my friends, he says. And when it exploded, my stomach came open and I was holding my intestines. My stomach is still painful and I can't sleep at night. His mother says the olive picking season is just getting underway, 
but they're afraid to go out and harvest the crop. <laughs> At another house in the village where we learned that this young girl was also injured by a cluster bomb, her mother resists questions about where Hezbollah fired rockets from. Officials from Human Rights Watch have documented how Hezbollah also fired around 100 Chinese-made cluster bombs into northern Israel. While the figure represents a fraction of Israel's payload, campaigners say the group's use of the bombs is another reason to rid the region, indeed the world, of such weapons. We've called on countries who stockpile um, munitions which have a very high data failure rate uh, to destroy their stockpiles and to cease transferring these weapons. And I certainly think that the moment is ripe. Uh, there's a tremendous amount of international uh, concern um, and certainly the evolving international norm is away from the use of this inaccurate uh, and dangerous weapon. Israel has cited American and British use of cluster bombs in Afghanistan and Iraq in its defense, arguing that it is being singled out for criticism. Campaigners pressing for a ban on cluster bombs know it's too late for the casualties of this war. But it might yet save some innocent civilians come the next one. Firing now. Inigo Gilmore, more for news in southern Lebanon.